Hi, Coach Dave Dabelmeyer is back, and uh, we're going to be talking about what's going on in Ohio. He's about 100 miles off from the site that train derailed and unleashed all the chemical havoc. There's a lot going on. There's a lot more to the story, so I really wanted to talk to Coach Dave and figure out uh, what he knows and what's going on in Ohio, and its impact is going to be all over uh, the region there, uh, the Ohio Valley. So th I found some interesting stuff. So we're going to be talking about that now. Hi, Coach. Hey, hey, Steve. I flipped my my phone. I'm so, uh, sorry, folks. We had a little bit of technical problem on my end before we got on. I'm on my phone rather than my computer, so I apologize for the the quality. Oh, isn't yeah, no worries. You look great as always. Um, okay, good. I'm really Thanks. excited to talk to you about what's going on, and also I wanted to mention that Coach Dave has his own ministry, uh, Pass the Salt. So I listen to him quite often on his own podcast, and he's you know well versed and has a lot of knowledge and information on all the stuff that we talk about and that's going on in the United States. So, and this time he happens to live in the same state that the chemical spill just happened. So what do you feel about it, coach? Like, I know you, you're like right there to see, see and hear everything. Well, uh, again, thanks for, thanks for having me on. I'm not an expert, but I, I'm pretty well, uh, I'm up to date on everything that's going on. Yeah. I, I guess, I wish I had my tinfoil hat I could put on because I, I pretty much wear that all the time, right? And uh, so a lot of people, uh, as I said, we're about 100 miles away from, from the, the site. I'm thinking about maybe going up myself later on this week. I saw President Trump's coming and Aaron Brockovich is coming. But uh, the, it seems to me that a lot of the information regarding what happened here has really been kind of regional. I was yeah. on a podcast with a buddy of mine out in, in uh, Idaho. And he'd, they'd sort of heard about it, but not not really heard about it. And then even around here, uh, I don't watch the regular TV, so I don't really yeah. know what local TV is doing. But it's been very, very low-key, very, very uh, downplaying it. And I was struck uh, immediately uh, after it happened that uh, that FEMA didn't come rushing in. You know, we've done a lot of – our ministry, we've done a lot of uh, hurricane, tornado relief, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. FEMA's always there. Right. And FEMA didn't come rushing in. And it told me, again, tinfoil hat, maybe it's not real safe as they're trying to tell us because they didn't rush a lot of people in there. So I'm all over the place on here this morning. Don't mean to be, but I have a I have a lot of information, a lot of it secondhand, but some of it firsthand because we do have some friends up in that area. Yeah, no, there's so much. I mean, even I start to think about, like, is this intentional? Is it natural? And the fact that they didn't televise it everywhere, because it's one of the major uh, natural or not natural, the, you know, chemical uh, disasters. And when I started looking into it, like, OK, they they fired off some of the chemicals so that would now create a hazard in the sky and clouds, turning it back into rain that's going to kill a lot of things out there. But then the Ohio Valley River is connected in that region that feeds off all these other states. And that's going to impact pretty much all the surrounding states that are around it. So it's a not just even that little town. It's now spread throughout that whole region. And uh, not, not, not only that, Steema, sorry, uh, the Ohio River, uh, if those of you not familiar with the state of Ohio, like I, I couldn't tell you, you know, the state of Montana. Yeah. But the state of Ohio, the bottom the bottom half of the state of Ohio, the border is the Ohio River. Yeah, and and so where this where this uh, East Palestine where this was released was literally at the mouth of the northern part of the Ohio River. So uh, this this chemicals and every bit every well, we know this right every stream in Ohio and every stream everywhere eventually ends up in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. It runs into the Ohio River down into Mississippi, down the Mississippi River, down into the Gulf of Mexico. So everything that happens up up uh, East Palestine where this happened is going to pollute the waterways all throughout the state of Ohio yeah. and as far down, all, all down through the south. Now, the, the question that we're all asking is, can we trust the government? Are they really telling us the truth? It's really not that bad. It's going to dissipate when we know that fish are dying, animals are dying, and uh you know, the, the plume of smoke that they sent off, the picture of it looked pretty much like what you would see at Hiroshima. You know, it was, un yeah. it was un unbelievable. So there, there's so much disinformation and misinformation that we're all grabbing as much bits and pieces as we go. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't trust the government at this point. Well, it, given it, it can't be good, Seema. Yeah. It can't be good, right? It can't be good. They, look, yeah. they tell us they tell us that the that the fumes from our car are dangerous, right? Yeah. And I, I don't know if your viewers saw that that plume of that cloud. It was it was unbelievable. Yeah, let me see if I can screen share. Um, it was it was twenty tractor trailer loads of a uh, uh, hundred thousand. I see it in my mind. I can't even put this stuff together. A hundred thousand pounds of of this chemical that it ain't good. And then when they burn it and they mix it, it, it attaches itself to hydrogen, which means water. And so it's going to be rained on us. It's going to be in the soil. It's going to be not just up there at East Palestine, but all across. Southern Ohio down through Tennessee and Kentucky and West Virginia. It, it's boy, if, unless they're lying to us. It's, it's oh, really they're good. definitely lying. And you know, the chemicals, like you said, there are, I think it was meant for like PVC chemicals. Yes. Um, but then I looked into like, why are they transporting all these chemicals out in your area? And it turned out that Ohio Valley they're actually um, manufacturing plastics. Mm. Like that's the big thing where they're trying to turn that whole region <clears throat> like this plastic thing. I mean, I was trying well, to screen share. But. Well, Seema, one of the things that, that uh, one of the terms that I'm using a lot, and I, I stole it from somebody, really, we're here in Ohio, really across America, but we're the breadbasket, right? If folks, if you were to look mm -hmm. at a map, if you were to look at a map of the United States, Ohio is what we call the heart of it all. In fact, Ohio is shaped like a heart. And it sits right in, you look at a body, it sits right where the, yeah, it sits right where the heart would be, right? And I, I, I think this is, uh, whatever's going on, this isn't good, but it's, the word that's being used a lot is called polycrisis. Oh, Poly yeah. Think about that, right? And uh, we're seeing all these fires burning up uh, food distribution plants. We're seeing chickens yeah. being burned up. So, uh, this is the breadbasket of America right here where we are. Yep. And this is, uh, from, my, from my perspective, again, with my tinfoil hat, I don't think this is by coincidence. I don't either. And because of all these recent, like you said, the, you know, the farming burning, the, the, power, um, the food plants, the chicken coops, all of these things that have been happening, not just by like a couple, but dozens and dozens all over the country. And if they're burning that down and saying, oh, it just happens. And now this, so I'm wondering, like, what would they get out of trying to ad attack uh, the farmland and the farmer and the, you know, the rural areas? What would yeah. they get? Well, they're poisoning it. They'd be poisoning the land, right? But we have to understand, first of all, that uh, the um, injection, the, the jab that they gave to us uh, has a long-term effect. Not everybody dies from this, this vaccine yeah. um, immediately, right? We're going to see, this is going to go on for for a year, maybe who knows how long the people are going to be impacted by this. And I think what we're seeing here is the exact same thing. Now, again, a lot of conspiracy things that you can throw out there, but uh, if they can somehow uh, destroy this, this farmland, run people out of this area, which is what they want to do, right? With, uh, yeah. with the whole, the whole idea of putting people in uh, smart cities and compacting people together. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, Beautiful, beautiful farmland, forestry. That's what Ohio is all about when you get out into the right. country. And to me, it seems a, to be an intentional destruction of the, just the purity of the land. Yeah, it is definitely because that also feeds in all to the waterways and stuff. So it, pretty much all of the eastern board is going to be polluted and destroyed. Well, uh, I saw I saw this, Steve. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I saw this when the, when the, uh, the plume of smoke went up. We were worried about rain. Uh, pushing yeah. it down this way. See, our, see in Ohio, again, if, I'm sorry if you're geographically you don't get what I'm trying to say. Our our weather usually goes from the west to the east, right? Yeah. So when this was plume of, plume of smoke went up, for the most part, it, it blew up into over Pennsylvania, over into New York, and up yeah. into uh, Vermont and that area. But the rain would would have brought it this way. So by having it happen right there, man, they were able to hit a lot of a lot of different uh, uh, lands, you know, farmland with this uh, with the fallouts, what I would call it, falling onto it. Who knows what that would will do years after year after year. So uh, this thing is so vast. I don't know if any of us really understand uh, just how serious yeah. it is. 
And the chemicals are, they don't like biodegrade easily. They could last in the environment for centuries. They cling to water. They cling yeah. to water. And so I was thinking like, what could remediation could they have done? Like, you know, the EPA was involved in FEMA, but they came late and they don't seem to care. Because no. normally even a tiny little bit of disaster, EPA is all over it and wants right. to. So how come they didn't want to like just go in and start taking care of the cleanup and all of that? What do they do? They just burned it. So are they really going to be taking all of that stuff out of the environment or just spreading it around? You know, or are they are they even able to? Are they able to take it out of the environment? And again, I come back to what I said. FEMA didn't come rushing in, and that was yeah. uh, that really sent up a lot of red flags to me. You know, now if FEMA, this is kind of interesting. Uh, where little East uh, East Palestine is. Uh, most people don't know this. There's about 75% Trump country. So, uh, so, <laughs> right? Another attack. So, yeah, so if they could run those people out. I mean, this is all conspiracy theory stuff, yeah. right? But stuff that you, that you really begin to, to think about. And uh, again, we don't, uh, I don't think it happened by accident. Why they would blow, why they, well, there's a lot of, see, there's a lot of factors here, aren't there? Why would they be, uh, why would they be taking that much chemical through the heartland anyway, just even the, the possibility that something could happen. You, you would think they'd find a better way to be able to do that. But, uh, you know, they're shutting down the, the uh, as we know, earlier in, uh, in the, the year, they cut down the trucks on the highways and the yeah. transportation, all this stuff. Seems to me like they're trying to starve us out or now poison us out. They didn't get us with the jab. Well, right. we'll get you with this fallout from the, from the uh, train. Well, when I started looking, they're, they're owned by, by. By the way, they're owned by BlackRock. I don't know if you knew that or not. Oh, they're I didn't know that. I was trying yeah, to figure that out. Like, who yeah. owns the train? So, yeah. there you go. But the thing is, like, China and other Asian nations were investing a lot of money to build these chemical plants in that area. So, right. but then, like you said, why wouldn't they protect the chemicals that are so easily in these trains that could just leak and go on? That that seems stupid and. The thing is, they were trying to, you know, get rid of all of the natural mm. uses of energy like coal and oil. But then now they're trading all of that to build all these chemical factories, which is crazy. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. But again, uh, Steve, I always I tell everybody this. If we can understand that the battle that we're facing is the seed of the serpent against yeah. the seed of the woman. If we understand it to be a spiritual battle, right? Yeah. That that Satan Satan loves death. The Bible says all those who hate me love death. Yeah. If we can understand that Satan's sole desire is to overthrow God and destroy God's creation. Yeah. And some of these things that we see happening are, is nothing more than a battle between the two seeds, the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. And that right. the, the devil's plan would be to destroy everything and especially how about the reproductive ability of the children of god see there's a this thing is so deep when you look at it from a spiritual standpoint this yeah. isn't republican democrat it's not liberal conservative oh, no. it's not it's not any of that it's something far greater and beyond what the average american citizen would really understand if they didn't have spirit eyes to see it yeah you're absolutely right because it is a spiritual battle and you know i my personal belief is that we're under attack um, all of this stuff that's been happening with not only the jabs, but then that didn't work as they hoped because they had a plan for 2025 to eradicate a big chunk of us. And then, right. then all the, they've been attacking all the food plants and allowing foreign nations like China to buy up a lot of property okay. and put in their own manufacturing stuff. And originally, I thought they didn't want to touch the lands because they wanted to just take over America and just get rid of us so they can just have the fertile land. But now with the chemical release, it kind of threw me off the loop because they're destroying big chunk of the eastern board. And the interesting part of it was that the name East Palestine, so that regional names, it, yeah. uh, according to the article, saying that it was early Christian settlers that named all of these places according to the Bible names. So yes, uh, but by the way, uh, they called. I'm not not trying to correct you. Around here, they called 
Palestine. So the Palestine. people who live up there are called East Palestine. I don't oh. know why. So yeah, I, I agree. I agree with you on, on all of that. Somebody's trying to call one on my phone. I don't know if my if you can still <laughs> see it. It'll no, stop here. It. It'll stop here in a second. But again, it comes back to you know those of us who uh, who there I am that are not uh, who are they call us conspiracy theorists. But yeah, um, theme, if they couldn't get us with the jab, are they going to get us with this stuff? Exactly what? It, and again, folks, the impact of these are more long range, and yeah. we are as I said, um, East Palestine. Again, the Ohio River goes the entire border of yeah. Ohio. Ends up down in Cincinnati. Cincinnati is about uh, 138 miles, I think I saw, from East Palestine. And they have already redirected their fresh water out of the Ohio River, not into their water in Cincinnati. So that tells me that uh, they get it. They know something's going on. Right. And from the very the, the very day that this thing was set on fire, which was purposely set on fire, from the very day Cincinnati started monitoring their water. So somebody somewhere understood the severity of what had just happened. Oh, yeah. I don't think they were even going to realize it for months on end when, you know, like you said, Erin Brockwich was there. That's her story. Like the love yep. now where they were polluting all of that, putting it in the river. And then years later, they were getting cancers. So... I don't think this will going to show up like immediately. Well, yeah. No, well, that's the point. President Trump's coming to East Palestine on Wednesday, yeah. and Aaron Brock Brockovich is coming on on Thursday. Now, listen, listen to what we're doing. If you just give me a second here, uh, we, I take a real uh, offensive, aggressive approach with, with our Christianity. We think that we're supposed to push back against the forces of darkness, not just pray against it. Yeah. So, on uh, what we are doing, we've already started it. We are. We found in Second Kings chapter two the idea of purifying the land and the water by putting salt into the tributaries. We, yeah. I get, if I had time, I would take you there. So we launched on Coach Dave Live this morning. All across America, people are going to their local tributaries, to their to their uh, to their rivers, to the creeks, to the streams all around them, and and. Uh, praying and launching salt into the water. And the Bible says if they do that, the life will come back into the water. And one of the things it talks about in Second Kings, believe it or not, from drinking the fallow water before was uh, miscarriages, having to do with re reproduction. So we think that yeah. uh, we're, we're launching people to go out even right now and, and, and throw salt, pray and throw salt into their local tributaries and just ask the Lord to do a miracle for us. Oh, definitely. I think he will. He has been working. I mean, that's why we're all, all of a sudden, there's a new found, you know, like Christians coming out and talking. I mean, I didn't do any of this before 2020. It didn't even matter right. to me. And all of a sudden, I can see what's happening and we're under that's attack. That's it. You yeah. see it. Right? Yeah. And you can't, you can't convince other people of it, can you, Steve? I mean, all you can do is. Oh, it's hard. Get, yeah. You know right away. You know within the first 30 seconds if their eyes are open or not. You, yeah. You just. Stop, right? Because you say, well, they, they don't get it. They clearly don't get it. They don't. You ask them, no, that's right. And so those of us whose eyes are open and see and understand, uh, that's why we have more of a duty to continue to say it and why folks like you and me find each other because yeah. we get it, right? We get yeah. it. And we want to do best we can to help other people understand it as well. And, and I'm grateful that I was able to meet, you know, like people like you and talk to about because before that, I, I thought my understanding was all just me because right. you talk to your friends and family and coworkers and they're, they're like totally oblivious to any of this. And I'm like, I can't be the only one that's thinking like no. this. I, so no. since then I realized that there's a lot of us and we are talking. So I think that is making an impact. I um, think that's it's been the one thing really that uh, thank God for the remnant or whatever they would call yeah. us because we are the ones who have led the resistance, right? Right. And Dima, we don't have to go back very far to go back to January 6th in Washington, D.C., which I was part of. I was yeah. there January 6th, right? From that very moment, they seemed to understand that we were the resistance. Yeah. And so they, they had to do whatever they could to stop us from spreading the truth. And, you know, that, that whole insurrection thing, that was all made up. And, you know, they're locking people. Oh, completely. You know, trying to yeah. scare people, shutting down the churches. So Alex Jones was right uh, two decades ago when he started talking about the info wars. Because yeah. that's really it, isn't it? It's an yeah. information war that we're in. 
Yeah, I think they're strategically doing these things to kind of control what they had already planned anyway. So when the January 6th happened, uh, with a couple of hundred thousand people that were there, they they were like the first frontline people to say, okay, you know, something is wrong, we're going to do something, we'll support press. But then by defeating that, by calling it insurrection and uh, right. all these other labels, what do they do? No one else is now able to go up and rally against yeah. them, right? Because they're afraid yeah. of imprisonment, fines, and death. I mean, all and, and by the way, by, by the way, they call it the First Amendment gives us the right to uh, yeah. to petition our government, peaceably assemble to petition our government for redress of grievances. So what yeah. did they do, Stima? Stima? They made it non-peaceful, <laughs> right? So right. they said, well, you guys are allowed to come here, but you can't come here and do violence. Well, I was yeah. there, and by the way, it was probably closer to 2 million. I mean, it was unbelievable. Yeah. And if you think about it, the number of people that did it, that were involved, who they've got 600 and some people in jail, most of them innocent, of course. Yeah. But let's say that it was a thousand people out of two million. That's not yeah. even a drop in the bucket, is it? But their yeah. message was leave us alone, stay the hell out yeah. of here. We right. run this. And the people own all those government buildings, every right. part of it. So it's not even like it's their property, That's it's right. our property. So if People as collective, you know, million or two million decided to go up there and take dibs on that property and take an accounting, then isn't that our right to do that anyway? So what's the point of calling the people, the citizens insurrectionists when, you know, they're right. Yeah. So I, I get it. It's just all of these things are systematic and it's not it's not going to stop because I feel no. like all of this is just escalation to one more thing. And eventually they're going to be able to dominate if people don't resist because what they were talking about, like putting in 15 minute cities. So all of these are like controls. And yeah. if they manage to take this train accident, that means they're going to control all the trains. That's right. Probably didn't have policies set in place until now. So now they're allowed to probably do all kinds of stuff that they didn't consider before. Yeah, well, so what, Stima, what if they, what if they come in and say, Hey, coach Dave, Man, we sure love you, and but we're here. We want to protect you. Uh, uh, we're gonna have to. Uh, you're gonna have to leave that 30 acres that you have. We're really, really sorry, but uh, just for your safety, I'm, that's yeah. that's what that's what we're looking at, isn't it, Steve? Right. Yeah. They, they didn't get us with the vaccine. Now they're going to get us with this, whether it's real or not. They certainly can use it as a means of manipulation to tell sure. you for for your own good, right? We're here. We're for the government and for your own good. You're going to have to leave your property. That's that's what I that's what I, I see think coming. You hit a nail on the head because that's something that I didn't really consider. So what I think now, based on what you just said, because this is going to affect the entire Eastern Board, multiple states, maybe now they can regulate who can live and where and how yeah. before all the rural areas that they weren't able to touch before. That's right. That's so, right. And shove us shove us into small smart cities, right? Yeah. We're gonna, right. And well, we we know Bill Gates and those guys are buying up farmland. We know the Chinese are buying up buying yeah. up farmland. They got to get us off of this land. That's what they got to do. And you know what's really see? I, I told uh, I put a meme on Facebook the other day that they made us for for two years. They made us wear a face mask over a virus that we couldn't see. Right. And now that we have this big massive stuff that we can see, they tell us we don't need a mask. It's all safe. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just. It's just mind manipulation in, in, in my assessment. Oh, it is. And it's, you know, but people are complying. That's the problem. Right. You know, right. because how could they have gotten away with any of it if people just said no? And yeah. they were willing to take something that they didn't even know and inject it. So I think there needs to be more awakening of understanding of, you know, as citizen, American citizens, that you do have a responsibility against the government you know like if the, the government's supposed to serve the people and if they do that great you know we need all these services but once they decided that we're no longer relevant and they can do what they want then spiritually i think we now have a battle going on uh who are you going to serve right who yeah. are you going to serve and we know this come on folks we are a we're a spirit who lives in a body we possess the soul this yeah. world is not our home, is what the scriptures tell us, right? right? So those of us who 
who are, are Christian by faith, Christian by adoption into the kingdom, uh, even though we this place, we, we've, we're told this world is not our home, right? We know this. We, we yeah. use that verbiage all the time. We're just passing through this. I'm going to go to a better place. Uh, I think this is all just part of that whole that whole cosmic battle, good against evil, that's playing playing out before us. And uh, the devil has two weapons, folks. You can write this down. He only has two weapons. He <laughs> lies. He can lie, right? Yeah. And he can th- he can throw fear at you. And that's really been the two weapons over and over and over. Yeah. over. Deception, which leads to fear. Yeah, exactly. And when I see deception and fear, then I know immediately, like, don't buy into it. You know, and right. they're lying to us from the moment they open their mouth about everything since. So I, but, you know, as as a whole, like, I'm hoping, you know, this message will go out to not only Christians, but everybody. So what should they be thinking about? You know, and how should we deal with all these uh, spiritual and physical attacks that we've been going on? Well, that, that's a great that's a great question because you know I've got my wife and I we have uh, ten grandbabies, and so my life's not about me. My life's about them. And uh, as I sit here and ponder, I look out my window right out here. Uh, is that is that stuff coming over here now? Is that falling down on this? Is this yeah. is this going to affect my grandbabies? Yeah. Those are the things that I begin to look at. Right? I'm not worried about me. Right. I'm I'm worried about them. What kind of future? Yada yada yada. So ultimately, you got to draw near to the Lord, right? You got to trust in the Lord with all of your heart, lean not in your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path and make sure that the, those that you love are safe and protected and under the banner of the Lord and walking walking out their faith and uh, trust in trust in the Lord. So uh, don't first of all do not be consumed and controlled by fear. Yeah, don't do that. We've, we've all just walked through this whole thing with COVID for two years and manipulating. I still see people wearing masks. I can't, I can't believe it. I right? know. I, I even it, saw that in Target uh, just yesterday where like most people weren't, but then the few of the people that were working there, I'm like, why? The yeah. store can't be telling you to wear that mm-hmm. because they, you know, they know now. So it's mind, yeah. it's mind control, right? Take captive yeah. every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bring it into captivity. And I think it's just a great, I tell everybody there's a, there's a rude awakening and then a great awakening. And yeah. right now we're in the midst of the rude awakening, right? For sure. if, if, I mean, if things are, things, steam, things are going to get bad. People are going to die. It's going to be all around us. And I think ultimately that's going to be good because I think it's going to lead to the to the great revival, whatever whatever that looks like. I hope so because it's already been traumatic for the last three years. It's yes. a lot to take in, and it, I know it's still going to get worse and worse and worse because they truly have yeah. a plan and they reveal yeah. that plan. You know. Um, yeah. By so the way, can- I apologize. I've called you Steema about three times. Steema, I'm sorry. Had that locked in my head. I oh, no worries. <laughs> I've been called all kinds of different names. So I'm all right. Um, so you mentioned the salt in the water, which is a new one for me. Yeah. Explain that That's, again. Okay, so go to, I, uh, if I have my scripture in front of you, get it to me. But people who listen can write this down. Go to 2 Kings chapter 2. I believe it begins in about verse 18. And it talks about where the Lord commanded them to go get salt, fresh salt, put it in the vials, and go and spread the vials into the water, that the water would purify and there'd be no more death and the production of their crop. The, the land was fallow. It wasn't growing the, uh, the fish, everything. So in Second Kings, he tells them, go put salt in the water. So that's what we're doing. That's what all of us connected with Coach Dave Live. I'm going to grab my wife even this afternoon. We're going to go out. We're going to, I'm taking my grandkids. I'm looking out here at the little spring that runs down yeah. back here. We're going to go salt that and do what? Trust the Lord to move supernaturally to clean up our water and, ke- and keep us keep us safe. Yeah, if, the Lord, hey, if the Lord doesn't move, dude, yeah. Lord, hey, we ain't, going to, we ain't going to survive this thing. So I tell people, little streams that are running this this could be everywhere, not just here. Yeah. A river that runs by your house, a city a city creek, anything like that. Go be obedient to the Lord and throw a salt in there and pray over and ask the Lord to purify the water. That's so. That's uh, what the, those of us at Coach Dave Live are doing. Yeah. No, that is amazing. I'm so thrilled to even hear that that you actually applied one of the verses. In yes. my head, I was thinking like one of the things. Uh, they could do in any area, like uh, plant more of the natural vegetation that grows. 
because yes. all of the plant life actually filters and cleans the water. It does. And, and combining with your salt, uh, I think I, I've never heard of that. So now I'm well, think, the, the salt, though, think, think about this, uh, Seema. We are the salt of the earth, aren't we? Yeah. We are, right? So yeah. it, it falls within our hands, the ability to take control of this. Right. We're, in the mess, oh. we're in the mess that we're in because the salt has lost its savor. Yeah. Now, Christianity has, doesn't have the impact it once had. Christianity isn't what it was in my grandfather's generation, right? right. So we're going to put salt back in that water and believe God for a time of restoration to bring life back. Water always represents the flow of the Holy Spirit. Let's awaken. Let's refresh the Holy Spirit of God yeah. and uh, stand up and push back against all this darkness. I love that. I think they can do that in all of the waterways. Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yes. now that, that would just work with God to, you know, he's the, he's the one who's doing all the cleaning and re restoration. But yes, it's our faith. So I think the key is not only the salt, but the prayer that goes with it, right? right? Well, it's, it's, his, it's an action point for his faith, yeah. right? He asked us to go do it. We're going to go do it. Now the results are up to him. Yeah. To obey is better than to sacrifice. So, Lord, we're going to go, I'm going to salt this water because that's what your word said. And, Lord... Uh, you said that you would purify it and that you would bring life back into it. And we're going to do our part. We're going to pass the salt and we're going to trust you to do your part. Perfect. And that your ministry name also says the same thing. I'm actually going to try it. I have a, a Mississippi River that's close by. Yeah. And I think that feeds into it, right? The yes, that's right. It's coming your way. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to throw some salt in there. We'll throw some salt in there, right? Praise yeah. the Lord that. Pray for new life to restore it, Lord. Come bring that spirit. Bring your spirit back, Lord. We need you. You're you're our only hope. And let's clean up that foul that fallow water. Let's clean it up. Let's clean up that fallow ground. And only God can perform that kind of miracle. Yeah, and I pray that He helps all those people in that town to get some yeah. healing. And well, you know, I, I I told you I I, I just in fact got a text here as, as we were talking. Uh, we're probably going to go up there. I was really hesitant really was yeah. because i believe it's poison central to be honest with you yeah uh, why yeah. would why would anybody go up there right. but uh, again you know uh, jesus went and dealt with the lepers didn't he yeah so, uh, so uh, they they need somebody to bring some purity and some healing into that uh, that uh, city so some of my buddies and i are trying to put a plan together to, to go up there we don't want to be up there when trump's up there because we don't want all the rigmarole that goes on with that we might yeah. go up the day day after it's a very very small town it's east palestine it's only got a population of about 3500 people really small out in the middle out in the middle of nowhere and, and why say, why why would they even pick that town too it's at the mouth of the ohio river that's oh. why the high river runs in runs down all through ohio and down into the mississippi and down all the way down into new orleans into the gulf of mexico right yeah so so it would pollute it will pollute a lot of places on its way down through. That's so that's strategic. Uh, it's, I believe it's, oh yeah, I believe it's strategic. Yes. No. Yes, yeah, so of all places for it to happen there, right? Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, I think those people will need, you know, especially if you're going there to, to need someone like you to give them hope and way. And you know, I, I don't know what they're gonna do because if it's really, you know, so polluted like that, how can they even live there? Well they can that's the that's the whole thing, is it? Can can they? Are they trying to run them out of there? Can they really live there? And so, you know, again, I have some friends who are very, very close up there. I said, what are you, what are you doing? They're seven miles away. Well, they're, they're living their life. Right? What, what, are you, what are you supposed to do, right? Yeah. But uh, I, I think the reality of it is far more dangerous than what any of us realize, which is why immediately, see, a lot, we do a lot of like hurricane relief, tornado relief yeah. with our, well, that's why I didn't run up there right away. I right. didn't want to take people up into what was clearly a poisonous area. Do it with, with, with caution and under the unction of the Lord. If you would ask me to go up there, I'll go. But I'm not just going to go running up there because I think people need help. I think we have to do it with wisdom. Yeah, you're right. Because it's, you know, it's, those chemicals, once they get inside of you, it's going to be a yep. disaster. So I, I hope they, they have their own wisdom that God is there anyway in spirit to kind of help and them out. Do you... Think that there's anything that could be done for that town other than as Obama I feel like they're going to lose their lands and everything. As a, as President Obama would say, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it ain't good. Whatever it is, it ain't good, right? I mean, we we already see that waters have been polluted 
fish is fish are dying in the waters. Yeah. Animals are dying. Uh, again, uh, as just like it was with with COVID, the impacts are long term. Right. After you've taken the, the, the jab, uh, you may not have any problems. It might be four years, five years before yeah. it shows up. And this, yeah. I think, I think this is the exact same thing. Yeah, I kind of, I think twenty thirty around that time frame is going to be horrible. If this that would be their that would be their time frame for yeah. sure, wouldn't it? That, right. That's what they I think uh, that's one nice thing about the devil. He always tells us what he's going to do before he does it. And uh, yeah. I, he's been telling us 2030. They've been talking about that for how long, right? Yeah. So they've, they've, set, they've set that marker in the ground. We ought to pay attention to what they've told us. Yeah, except nobody's listening. That's the yeah, problem. No. They did say that in their 2030 sustainable goal agenda. There you go. Yep. And all of this stuff is stemming from all of that, where they're trying well, we know to. The the Georgia Guidestones, right? So they had to get the yeah. population, right? All of it. That if open our eyes, folks, put yeah. these things together and seem a, there are not a lot of people that are, right? I so know. it's important. What you're doing is important because it's, yeah. it's, it's getting information out to others. That's really all we can do. That's all, yeah, exactly. That's all I've been trying to do because there's nothing else physically I can do. You know, as much as I want to help and change things, it's really up to the people collectively. Amen. No, so, so, I, think so, I got to have an assignment for you. Okay. Seema, you got to write this down now. Promise yeah. me you'll do it. Second <laughs> Kings. All right. Yeah. Second Kings two and beginning about verse 18. And you, you read that and you'll see how the Lord tells us we can do it. We have to purify the water, clean the water. So I, I just ask if you'd kind of spread that message around to everybody, no matter where you are, go salt the water, clean that, clean it up. Let the Lord do a miracle for us. Well, I learned that today for the first time. So I am more than excited about that prospect of doing that. And is it any table it, salt? You can I, use I, yeah, table salt, table salt. I learned it for the first time yesterday. So I'm not too far ahead of you, right? <laughs> but here's what I know. You can tell others, right? Right where you yeah. are. Right where you, folks, think about the, where, where do you, what, where, what state are you in, uh, Seema? Uh, Minnesota. Yeah. So think about the chemtrails. They certainly come over your place, don't they? Yeah. Think of the things that are already poisoned in the water, poisoned in the land. So you go out there and we do that. Say, Lord, please clean yeah. this up for us, right? We're the salt of the earth. We're going to throw the salt in here. Lord, do your magic. Uh, clean clean us up here. Yeah, I'm going to have to go buy a big bag of salt now. <laughs> yep. There you go. And I love there that. And I think prayer too, you know, collectively, if we're all praying that God that we need to beat the spiritual enemy and, you know, like turn yeah. this around. And if we don't do that, cause God is like allowing the punishment a little bit to yeah. just revealing that this is what they're going to do if you follow them. And they're going to continue to do it worse and worse and worse till you're till basically locked in your own room. And they're just going to feed you if they wanted so, to do that. So but, I like to, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I like to use this, this illustration folks. When you come, when you come to the Lord, we see Jesus. He's, he, uh, he's, Saves us from our sins. All yeah. right. We're no longer guilty. If we repent, we're guilty, but we're forgiven. But see, as you know, in your own life, that doesn't always cancel the consequences of your sin, does it? Yeah. Right. So yeah. for a woman out there, maybe who got, got pregnant when she was in high school and she had a, had a, uh, had an abortion and the Lord's forgiven her of it, but it didn't, it didn't cancel the consequences of it right yeah. and right. so what, what what we're dealing with now what we're looking at now is the consequences of all of these sins that we've done over the years the rooster's coming home and so we're going to go back and we're going to take the salt and we're going to say lord you cleanse me How, cleanse our, cleanse our land cleanse yeah. our second chronicles seven fourteen. we're going to put this salt in this water representing the holy spirit lord cleanse this land for us that's that's the way we view it Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I'm hoping I'll do another podcast just on the salt um, and hopefully spread that message to go. Uh, Second Kings, all right? Yeah. Second Kings. <laughs> Second Kings, too. And you'll see the story right in there. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate that. Um, so do you have any closing thoughts on Ohio and the rest of the area that's been damaged? Well, okay, again, as you look at the map. Ohio's the heart of it all. I've been saying that for that was that was what we always had as our slogan here in Ohio. Yeah. The heart of it all. Because we're shaped like a heart and it's right in the middle. And so uh I've always believed that 
what uh, the revival that's coming, and I believe there's a revival coming. It's going to start at, start in Ohio with a heartbeat of it all. Now, I know what's going on down in Kentucky, and I don't want to get into all that. Yeah. Uh, Kentucky's just over the border from us. But I believe that, that if you look at the heart and you look at Ohio and you look at the bloodstream, the rivers, it's like the blood pulsating out of a heart, right? Yeah. And I, be I believe that uh, uh, God is getting ready to do great things, and we're going to do the best we can here in the state of Ohio to pump that pure blood of the Holy Spirit back out again. Yeah, and I pray for the best for that um, because I think, you know, if we could just turn around and take care of our own citizens rather than having foreign companies come in, yes, buy sir. lands, set up their shop, and they only want to seek to destroy everything that's already here. And yes, we, I think we've been, already been blessed with clean air, clean water before this, you know, relatively yes. had good lands. So... I pray that so, God, it's yeah. a signal from the Lord. Clean things up here, right? Let's yeah. clean this up. Let's let's clean up the spiritual condition of this country because ultimately that's all that really matters. Yep. Well, I will definitely hope that people do come together in that spiritual battle. I appreciate your time so much, and I love to listen to your own podcast. And I'll share all the links where they can find you. Are you? Um, do you have like a? donation or something like that in your way yeah, yeah it's always uh, on online you can do it and then see i forgot to say this the next uh beginning tuesday wednesday and thursday night at coachdavelive.com we we do we are going to do interactive prayer for the situation here an hour mm -hmm. a night so it'll be eight o'clock your time yeah. seven o'clock central and it's interactive it's a mm -hmm. it's a zoom conference and we did one for the uh during the halftime of the super bowl a week ago, we prayed for two hours. People all across America came in, joined our our, our link there at CoachDaveLive.com, interactive prayer, and they prayed. I prayed. It wasn't some big pastor off in somewhere, but we came in individually. And we're going to do it again on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, we're going to be in a collective prayer. So we would love for you people. See where it says off the air? Go back down there a bit. Right there, boom, that thing will be on. And you click on that and boom, you're in the middle of it. And part of interactive prayer with hundreds, if not thousands of um, uh, people all across America praying for yeah, the condition. I would love to do that. So it's 8 o'clock Central, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay. So when, when, which uh, time zone are you in? We're in Eastern. 7. 7, seven your time, 8. Yeah. And, okay. Perfect. Yeah. I'll be that's there. In the, that's in the evening now because I'm looking at my website here and it, it's talking about my morning show, which is on at seven in the morning. But this right. is special. This is seven at night, prayer target only. That's what this is all about. 7 a.m. on 7 p.m. on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Well, I'll definitely wouldn't, be there. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be cool if we got a million people coming in and praying? Well, let's pray for that, that a yeah. million people come and all join in in the prayer. I would love that. I'm going to be there. I'm glad it's in the evening because people who are working, then they can come right yes. out there. That's why we did it. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Until next time. And I hope things are better in your area. And yeah. Let's keep praying. We dwell under the secret place of the Most High. We abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It's Psalm 91. And I would suggest a lot of Christians out there make that part of your daily routine. Pray sign Psalm 91 over, over your house, your family, your dwelling. And those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And that's what that's what we believe. That's what we pray. And that's where we stand. Yeah. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. And I'll awesome. see you next time. Thank you, dear. Honor to be with you. Bye-bye. Same here. Bye.